So I owe anybody that's been following this build um, a huge apology for um, not having any updates recently. And to make up for that, I've got at least a three part update here. We'll see um, what I'm leaving out, right? So uh, here's the car. It's, um, as you can see, the suspension is kind of a part. I'll explain that in a little bit, um, but uh, it's coming along quite nicely now. Um, I've actually had some time to work on it, so all is well. For those that this is the first time they're watching one of these videos, <clears throat> just a quick explanation of what we got going on here. So this is a Factory 5 GTM. Um, you look up Factory 5 Racing, they build kit cars. Um, most specifically, they're famous for their Cobra replicas and uh, the Daytona 65 replica. Um, either way, uh, the GTM is a car that they built and designed themselves, and um, yeah, they, you know, it's uh, designed to be like built around um, a Corvette um, parts car, donor car. Um, you get the body with the kit, you get the frame, you get a bunch of parts, all these aluminum panels and everything. Um, but then you use uh, Corvette parts like suspension, um, it's modified, but it's some Corvette suspension basics, steering column, uh, brakes, and things like that. Well, in this case, um, I decided instead of using the LS motor that the kit was designed around, usually it's designed around a, an LS uh, 1, 2, or basically any LS, um, plus a Porsche transaxle, I decided I was going to do something a lot different and go with a Tesla electric drive unit. So this is the sport rear wheel drive, what they call the big drive unit, um, out of like a 2012 to 2016 or 17 Model S. It's 400 kilowatts rated. What's that, what that means is about 540 horsepower six seven hundred foot pounds of torque depending on uh, the controller um, this crazy amount of hoses i'm going to talk about it's actually going to be the topic of this video specifically um, these all these hoses are coolant system for both the drive unit and these batteries so these batteries are uh, space throughout the car. They are from a Chevy Volt 2017 or 2018. They're sets of two Chevy Volt batteries. Um, and I'll kind of go over that real quick here also when I'm doing the cooling system. Um, either way, so I've got everything, like a lot of the custom stuff is done at this point. And that's what's taken so long is everything uh, has had to be made to make this electric system work. Um, new motor mounts. You can see some uh, motor mounts that I uh, designed, sent out to a company called Send Cut Send. They cut them, sent them back, I welded, here we are. Uh, cooling system, 100% custom. Battery mounts, obviously. Um, and then most most everything actually, I mean, for the most part went okay. Uh, I just had to like move some body panels around. There were a couple of frame members that were in the way of the drive unit. Um, they came in kind of in this area here. I had to move those out of the way, cut and re-weld them and put more in reinforcement. So uh, here we are. So this is, this is the car, this is the first time uh, in a long time that I've had it this low on the ground and it's it's kind of crazy how just how tiny this thing is going to be uh, when it's all said and done um, as you can see here we've, you know I've actually got the lift under it and it, it would be even lower if um, the lift was out of the way I only plan on having about five inches of ground clearance and that's maybe seven currently um, so either way here we are Again, the topic of this, um, this update, this video, is going to be the cooling system. So, uh, cooling system in this car, 100% uh, custom designed uh, by myself. I kinda, I'm, you know, I'm winged it a little bit. I um, wasn't 100% for sure um, what to do, to be honest. There's, um, 
you know, a lot of variables that go into this, but I'm going to kind of uh, run down thought process and what we've got. So up front here, you can see I've got two radiators, two radiator fans. These are both um, OE size out of like a Honda Civic from like the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, the uh, fans are OE replacement units. They, they bolt right on. Got some coolant reservoirs that I, they weren't for this application obviously, or nothing's for this application, but found some that suited my uh, needs. So basically this side, so the driver's side, this is for the batteries and coolant starts here, exits down at the bottom. We've got a fluid pump here. This is the same as a uh, supercharger pump out of a like 0304 Cobra for the uh, air to water intercooler um, comes out and then we've got these T's. These batteries have to be cooled um, in parallel. They don't, work, they don't work from one to the next to the next. So all of the ends are tied together and all of the outs are tied together throughout the whole car. The hoses follow down um, the tunnel there. You can see a battery squeezed down there. If this panel was off, you'd see a battery under there. On this side, this is where the OEM gas tanks would be from the Corvette OEM. Um, another battery, smaller, and then three of the biggest batteries, and then two smaller batteries. Um, so yeah, so this is this is the setup. Uh, again, it's a little confusing, I'm sure, uh, but yeah, all of one side of the batteries are tied together, and all of the other side. I've ran the system; seems to be working just fine. I don't have any leaks at this point, so hopefully. It, uh, stays to be the case. Um, all of this is uh, 17 millimeter, I think it's 11 16 inner diameter uh, tubing. I've got the kind of one time use crimp style connectors everywhere. They seem to be pretty efficient. I like using them. Um, some people will call them to be, you know, kind of a pain, and they can be, um, but if you put, put them together right and think about the angle that you're um, installing them at, they're not too bad. So it's kind of a mess. I haven't had a chance to um, tile these together and clean them up yet, uh, but these guys here, so I've got the uh, 3D printed brackets that I've designed. Um, so I'm gonna use these to hold the hoses together and apart from one another. And then I'll also make some brackets to hold them um, to the chassis in certain places. Uh, and then I designed this one to fit basically here so that these two aren't uh, chafing against one another and one's not crushing each other as you can kind of see it's doing right now. The other side um, up front, I'm not going to go back up there and show it again, but the other side comes to the drive unit. So we've got the inlet to the drive unit right here and then the outlet is going to be nestled down inside there. Um, the reason cooling the drive unit is super important is because it has the inverter inside of it. And so if it was just a drive unit, usually they don't need to.